For those of you online or by way of CD, we'd like to welcome you to Good News and Kingdom Truth Church. Hallelujah. Yeah. We pray that the Lord, the word will bless you richly and that the Lord will bless you in the word of God. Amen. Turn with me quickly to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, and we're going to go to the sixth chapter here at the 10th verse. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. Say rulers. rulers. Against the authorities. Say authorities. Authority. Against the powers of the dark world. Say dark world. dark world. And against spiritual forces of evil. Say spiritual forces of evil. In heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that you may, in the day of e when the day of evil come, you may be able to stand your ground. Look at your neighbor and say, stand your ground. Stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm in the name of Jesus. You know, there, are, there, there have been many teachings that have, have gone forth. And as a matter of fact, not too long ago, I, I spoke to a, a minister. Well, actually, I didn't speak to him directly, but he was speaking to a, another group of ministers. And, and he made the statement. He said, you know, I wonder why Christians are always fighting. Why Christians are always in, in, in a battle. Why they always seem to be uh, going through a, a, a press. Uh, because the Bible says that we have... We have won. Mm -hmm. The battle is fought. The victory is won. And we are already victorious. So why do we continue to fight? Why do we have to put on the armor? And this is, this is what the minister was saying. Why do we have to put on the armor of God? Mm -hmm. We've already won. Why don't we just continue to worship our king, magnify our king, glorify our king, and go in and possess what God has called us to possess? Now, I want you to know that sound good, amen? Mm -hmm. But it's something about the Spirit of God when he's on the inside of you, he gives you discernment, amen? That's right. yeah. and, and though I knew it sounded good, <laughs> I knew something's wrong with that statement, amen? Yeah. You know, and you don't want to be the one to have to say something. I said, why do I, I don't want to be the one to have to say something. Yeah. I just want to agree with everybody, amen? Sometimes you just want to agree, amen? That's right. <laughs> but when he made the statement, I... I it, I couldn't hold my peace. I, know that's right. I, wasn't, I wasn't brash and I wasn't harsh. Amen. I, I, I wasn't mean spirited or anything like that. I just softly said, the word of God tells us to put on our weapons. Amen. Right. And the word of God says that we are in warfare. That's right. Amen. We are in warfare. We worship our king. We magnify our king. We glorify our king. But make no mistake about it. We're in a spiritual battle. Amen. We're in a spiritual battle. Amen. We have to know this for over these 20 years while we've been yucking it up and living it up and we've been flying in our planes and in our in our jets and, and we've been doing all of these things. We've been coming up with all kinds of scriptures that we've manipulated to do what we want to do. At the very same time that we've been doing this, there's been an invasion. It's been taking place. Look at your neighbor and say spiritual warfare. warfare. There's been an invasion taking place. Yeah. It used to be that when you love the Lord, you would pass it down to your loved one. But I want you to know that the problem took place when the church abandoned its post. That's right. That's right. We abandoned our post. Yeah. And the reason why I say we is because if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Of the problem. Amen. You're part of the problem. So my hands aren't clean when it comes to this matter. Amen. Because when we were all having a good time, you know, saying Jesus died so that we wouldn't have to suffer. Jesus died so that we wouldn't have to go through. Gee, we were saying all of these things. And it sounded good. That's right. Sounded good. Jesus died so that I can have a million. I remember one brother said, you, what's the matter with y'all? You, you don't want to be a millionaire, son? What's the matter with you? I said, what's wrong? What's wrong is that's a faulty gospel. That's right. It's not the real deal. That's right. We're in a battle, amen? Yeah. We're in a spiritual battle. Turn with me over to the book of 2 Corinthians. 
2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 10th chapter, the 4th verse. And it says, the weapons that we fight with are not weapons of this world. That's right. On the contrary, they have divine power. Say divine power. Divine power. Now, what I want you to know here, what I want you to know here is that we're not helpless. We're not sitting here helpless. We're, we're, not, we're not sitting here shaking, amen? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that the name of Jesus, the demons shake. You know, they tremble at the name of Jesus, amen? Now, now while they trembling, we're cheering, amen? Right. Because Jesus works on our behalf and we work on his behalf, right. amen? Amen. So we realize that we're in a battle, but we're not intimidated. They may call us. They may say, well, you know, you, 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 you guys are hallucinating. Amen. There is no enemy, but there is an enemy. We need to know about it. The Bible says that I would not have you ignorant. Mm. The devil's devices. Right. The Bible calls him the enemy. The Bible says that your enemy, the devil, he just goes around roaring. Seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Yeah. We have to know these things. But the wonderful thing about it is that God says that you are an overcomer. Yeah. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he has placed the devil under our feet. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about him, but we better know his schemes. Amen. That's right. That's right. You don't have to be scared of somebody to be deceived by him. You don't have to be intimidated by somebody to be, be, to be deceived by them. Amen. And so what we have to do is know his schemes. I like the way one person put it. They said the devil, what he is, is he's a three play pony. He knows three plays. That's it. He knows three tricks. He knows three. He comes in and, 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 and he, he knows how to switch it up. He knows how to change it up. And, and he comes over and over again with these same tricks. That's right. But the thing is, we have not taught one another from the word of God, how to overcome him, how to overcome his schemes. We haven't been taught our devices. The Bible says that here we have weapons and the weapons have divine power. Yeah. Said the weapons we fight with, not weapons of this world. Stop trying to fight the way the world fights. Amen. Stop trying to fight the way the world fights. We said that he comes in three areas. He comes in these three areas. He comes to devour us. He comes to separate us. He comes to divide us. Yeah. What did we talk about? We said in those three ways that he often comes. Which way do you say he comes? He comes in the area of doubt and unbelief. Amen. Right. He'll come and he'll try to make you doubt. He'll make you doubt and then he'll turn that doubt into unbelief. Yeah. There's another place, another area that he'll come in, he'll try to breach. And that's the area of unrepentant sin. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? unrepentant sin he'll come in and he'll try to cause you this is what he'll try to do he'll try to cause you to not come to him and ask for forgiveness That's right. see we all sin and fall short of the glory of God amen but what the enemy will try to do is he will try to cause you to feel convicted That's right. he'll convict you then he'll condemn you amen God wants you to be convicted of your sin amen he wants you to be guilty of your, feel guilty of your sin because he's ready to forgive you. But when you become condemned in your yeah. own heart, yeah. all of a sudden you'll do like Adam and Eve did. You'll hide from the Lord. Right. Once he can get you to hide from the Lord, yeah. then you will continue in your sin. Why? Because you have not been delivered from your sin. Right. You have not been delivered or you're not walking in the deliverance of your sin. So once he can get you alienated from God himself, yeah. now all of a sudden he'll bring you to a place of rebellion. Well, you just say, you know, I'm just going to do what I do. Amen. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Amen. And this is, these are things where he comes in and he tries to divide us and devour us. Yeah. So there's another area, and that is the nasty virus of pride. Yeah. Amen. He'll come in in that area and he'll cause, you can see a church doing good, growing in Christ, doing the things of God. You say, wow, that church is on the move. They're getting things done. All of a sudden, pride starts to come in. The one place that you can see pride rises up is when you're doing great failure or when you have great success. When failure comes, everybody's trying to point the finger whose fault it is. Not my fault. It's your fault. It's not just your fault. The reason why we're not succeeding is because of your fault. And then when there's great success, I did this. I did that. And you find that in many churches, and it starts from the top. Amen? It starts right here from the top. That's why we have to be on guard have to humble ourselves in God. But let's look at this. Let's look at, let's look at doubt and unbelief. How do we overcome this doubt and unbelief? How do we overcome it? Amen? We know that God has, the God has put the devil under our feet. 
We know that he has no power over us, but we know that we're overcomers. Amen. Now, we said that it's very rare for one to admit this, that we have doubts. It's very rare for us to do this. Ministers don't like to let you know that we have doubt. Amen. But for those of you who are babes in Christ, I want you to know that everyone have moments of doubt. That's right. That's right. The devil will come. He will try to throw a doubt in your mind. Make you think that God is not who he says that he is. That's right. He'll make you think that God has not called you to do what he has called you to do. How many of you have experienced that? Amen. Amen. He'll tell you, you, God has placed gifts on the inside of you. Amen. He'll try to tell you, you ain't going to be able to do that. That ain't going to work. Ain't nobody going to want that. Nobody's going to be delivered by that. Nobody needs that. He'll try to throw those doubts in your mind. Yeah. And you have to press against those doubts. That's right. But sometimes we just need to know the weapons that God has given us and how they work against the schemes of the devil. Yeah have to know that the first thing that we need to do in order to overcome doubt and unbelief is to admit it That's it's right. the first thing just That's admit right. it just admit it amen just admit it you're not you, you know many of us we like to think of ourselves as super saints mm -hmm. super saint I never have doubts mm -hmm. I never have doubts. have you ever seen people like that never have doubts never have a moment of unbelief never have those things mm -hmm. right. Some, some people, they, they, that's how they roll. And, and some of those people, you really, can't, you really can't have real good fellowship with them because they don't seem real. Right. Amen. You, you, right. you got to be going through something sometime. Sometimes you, there's got to be, be a little doubt sometime. We all have those moments. That's right. But God does not want us to be tormented by our doubts. Right. He doesn't want that. As a matter of fact, he said, look, you come and you ask him. You know, I heard somebody say, you don't even have to ask God, but I'm going to tell you something in everything. Mm -hmm. I believe in everything. Yes. You better go and you have to ask God. Amen. Oh, you have to go and ask God. There's some, some people just say, speak it. You ever heard that? Right. Don't, why are you praying? Just speak it. Just be, you know, those are the just do it Christians. Amen. You have to be careful with that. When you hear something that's not in the word of God, you have to be careful with that. God said, Come to me and ask me. As a matter of fact, he said, he said, I will have it. Luke 18 says, here what he said. He says, look, I tell you all. He said, the, the word of God says, don't give up. Always pray. You are always pray. God's people are to always pray and never give up. Always pray and not faint. Always pray and not lose heart. Amen. So you see the opposite of falling and, and, and doubting and falling into a fetal position. The very opposite of that is to roll over, get on your knees, and pray to the Lord. That's it. That's it. Tell everybody, ask God. You don't even have to do it in the way that other people do it. Right. Just say, Lord, help me. You know, I like the way the man said it, you know, in Mark 19, I mean Mark 9. He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Man said, do you believe your child will be healed? He said, now, it looked pretty bad. He said, you know, he said, Lord, I do believe, Come on now. but help my unbelief. Amen. See, that's real. I like that. That's right. You know, that's real. Sometimes I have to say, Lord, I believe. And this is me. I'm a pastor. I said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Yeah. And guess what? He comes through right on yeah. time. Amen. That's he right. comes through right on time. So that's the first step. The first step is to admit, admit that you have doubts and unbelief. Admit that you have doubts. And ask the Lord to heal you in that area, help you to believe in that area, increase your faith in that area. Amen. The second thing that we must do to overcome doubt and unbelief is to increase your daily spiritual diet of the word of God. Yeah. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. You know, we say that so much and we quote that so much that it goes right over our heads. But how many of you have ever experienced the fact that when you got into the word of God, when you started your day off, when you when you had a healthy dose of the word of God, how your day went smoother? Amen. Right. How many of you can witness to that? Your day just went smoother. When, when you stopped reading the word of God and you really forgot that you stopped reading the word of God, things started just getting just, you know, you start running into things. You're not reacting the same way that you used to react. Things were happening whether you was reading the word or not. Those same things were happening. Those same folk that get on your nerve were the same ones that was getting on your nerve the other day or the other day when, they, when, you, when you were able to stand up against that. You, you, you say, you know what? Everything's happening the way it was. My boss is still demanding. You know, I'm still, I still have to run like I'm crazy. But the days when I read the word of God, I was able to handle it. Endure. That's right. I was able to endure. 
So when I read the word of God and I studied the word of God, it seemed like God always gave me answers. And it wasn't even the thing that I was reading. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit works. You can be reading something totally different than the word of God. But God say, now that you're operating in obedience, the Holy Spirit now is generated. Amen. Holy Spirit now moving. Amen. And so all of a sudden, he'll give you answers in other areas you didn't even read that morning. But it's just that you're reading the, the word of God and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit quickens on the inside of you. It's like a quickening. You can feel it. I remember someone told me, they said, when you come to the job, you know, we, 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 see, a, we see like a light around you. And I knew that was because I was reading the word of God. Amen. Amen. And they came back about a couple of months later. They said, where that light? <laughs> Where's that light? You know, they didn't say it in a mean way. They were just concerned. Amen. But I realized I wasn't reading the word of God. I wasn't trusting God. But when I was trusting God, there was like a light. And I didn't even know it. I just say hello to somebody. They say, man, people start going to church. Man, I'm like, I need to get back in church. They ain't saying any words. Yeah. Just got to get back to church. All of a sudden, you're the light in a dark world. Yeah. But you can't be the light in a dark world if you're not getting into your word of God. Amen. You're not eating the word of God. It's just like you're not eating your, your regular food. You don't eat your regular food. You'll be all right one day. Well, nah, some of y'all will be all right one day. <laughs> one day. Some, some people, they, they, eat, they miss a meal one day. They land on the street like, you know. And, but but, but you, can, you can survive. You can move. You can go. But all of a sudden, a week, a week, you start feeling it. Your legs start shaking. You start, how many of you ever fast for a, a, a nice period of time? All of a sudden, your legs start shaking. You start, you know, your body's like, hey, I need some food. What do you think your spirit man is doing? You get it just once a week. You eat only once a week. Amen. What do you think your spirit man does? Amen. The word of God. You have to go and you have to study the word of God. Amen. A healthy dose, a healthy diet of the word. Jesus said in, in Matthew 4 and 4, he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He didn't say some of the words that proceed out of the mouth of God. He said every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So this lets us know that this here is God's word. Amen. And we got to read this word. We got, look, we have to be on a life's journey of reading this word from cover to cover. It's got to be a life's journey. See, it's, it's got, it's got, you have to read this word with intention. That's right. Got to read it with intention. Hey, look, you know what? I want to grow in this word. You know, over the past 20 years, let me tell you what's been happening. People have been taking this word and manipulating the word. That's right. Taking the word, pulling scriptures out, twisting them all around and using them. You know, you have you have ministers who did not desire to grow in the word of God. They just wanted to learn the word of God so that they can manipulate the word. Manipulate it to whatever they want. Have you believe in everything? But I want you to know that was the work of the devil. It's the work of the devil. Why? Because what happened is when people hear the lie and then they hear the truth, they get confused. I know some people who say, you know what, I don't even really, you know, read the word because you really can't depend on. I mean, all of it ain't really true. All of it's not really true. But, but God says, no, no, not one dot, no tittle. Don't remove one. As a matter of fact, he said, don't add anything to it. The reason why some of you walk around like superstars is because you're adding to my word. He said, isn't everyone preaching from the same word? Come on here. Amen. But when we start adding to it, this is what happens. So see, what we have to do is we have to read this word from cover to cover yeah. every single day. I tell you what, it will increase your faith. Amen? Amen. It will increase your faith. Make sure that you're standing and trusting on the true word of God. A lot of times if you take a teaching and you, you hear from that teaching and the teaching tells you something and you stand on that and then it doesn't come through, now you're mad at God. That's but it. see, you have to rightly divide the word of God. Let me tell you a story. It was a story. This, this lady who, uh, who, who heard from this, uh, this prophet came to town. This prophet came and the prophet told her that she's going to get a new car. Said, God's going to bless you with a new car. And she was happy. You know everybody, you know, they're real happy and what have you. Now, I, I, I love when prophecy is good, but when prophecy is bad, I'm going to tell you something. You want to get my antennas up. You start prophet lying. I mean, you get me upset then. But this lady here, she took this word. He said, go to the dealership, lay hands on your car. So the lady have no job or anything like that, but she goes to the dealership and she lays hands on the car. The people ask her, what do you need some help? And she says, no, I'm, I'm okay. She's laying hands, she's speaking in tongues on the car. So the next day she comes back again and she does the exact same thing. She said, now people do these things. They believe when the, when the man or woman of God comes and give a word of prophecy, people do these things. They listen to them. That's why the Bible says when you, you those who have this gift, you, you got to make sure that you hear from. Matter of fact, you have to be in the word more than anybody else. That's right. That's because when you hear something, you have to know, is this God or is this me or is it the enemy? 
We see in this word of God, the enemy can talk to anybody. Amen. amen. The Bible said the enemy talked to Peter. Amen. Right. The Bible said that the enemy, the enemy came and talked to Joseph. Amen. The enemy will talk to anybody. He'll try to get through to you. So you got to get into this word, amen? But anyway, she's going out to see you the next day. She goes, lays hands on the car. She's speaking in tongues. So the people say, look, ma'am, you can't keep coming here. You're disturbing our customers. And she said, this is my car. This is my car. She comes back again. They said, we're going to have to put a restraining order on you. They put a restraining order out on her. The woman goes back again, and they end up having to lock her up. Now, this woman, think about this, this woman. Think about this lady. Now, I look at her. I don't look at her and say, you know, you know you, at first glance, you laugh. You say, what? Can you believe this? But this precious, this person thought that she was hearing from God. That's right. Amen. The Bible says, if you do anything like this to one of my little ones, right. it's better to tie a millstone around your neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea. That's right. Don't blame her. Amen. She was probably a baby. Don't blame her. Blame the one who stood up and gave that word and blame the one who sat there and allowed that word to go by. That's who I blame. That's right. Amen. But see, now this person is not going to believe the word of God. God got to heal that person. Mm -hmm. Amen. So make sure when you're standing, you're standing on the true word of God. Make sure you're standing on the true promises of God. Amen. Amen. Turn to second Peter, the second chapter. First verse. And it says. But there were also false prophets among the people. Just as there will be false teachers among you. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to know this. See, 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 when people get mad at God, they have to realize God already knew this stuff. Amen. Right. God already knew this and he already warned us. Amen. You have to know your enemy. Amen. Amen. You have to know your enemy. Amen. See, some people walk out and say, God, why you let that? God said, no, I warned you of these things. That's right. how, to, how to discern between good and evil. That's right. Said the false teachers, there will be false teachers among you. He said, and they will secretly introduce dis, de, destructive heresies, That's right. even denying the sovereignty of the Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Yeah. Amen. These people will come in. The Bible says they will come in and they will preach things and teach things to you. That is a total violation of the word That's of God. Right. Right. There's one part of the Bible where it says these people even preach things they just simply made up. That's it. They just make them up as they go. And because it sounds good, the people of God end up going after these things. And the next thing you know, you have a bunch of people who don't have faith in God. That's right. no God told me he was going to give me this. He was going to give me that. And God didn't do it. That's it. Amen. When you stand, stand on the true word of God. God's word is real. You don't have to add nothing to it. You don't have to take anything from it. God's word is real right by itself. That's right. Mm. God said he'll heal you. He'll heal you. God said he'll deliver you, he'll deliver you. God said he'll set you free, he'll set you free. If God tells you something, your spirit will agree with that. Right. Oh, you'll know it. There are some things that God promised me, and I knew it was God. That's right. I knew it was him. Nobody had to come and confirm it. I knew it was God. That's right. And when he told me those things, I held on to him. Now, sometimes doubt came in and said, you know what, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. But I have to keep trusting and believing God. Amen. That's right. And when I begin to believe God and trust him, God came through every time. That's right. I want you to know if God told you something, if God told you yeah. your spirit, he said, my sheep know my voice. That's right. My sheep know my voice. Amen. And so when God shares something with you, when he tells you something, you write it down. Write it down. The Bible says even the apostles, they misunderstood God in some things. So write it down. Whenever God takes it, write it down. And know that God knows everything. That's right. Every now and then, you'll look and say, God, I thought you was going to do it on this day. He said, no, I, I, no, that's not what I told you. I'm doing it on that day. The Bible says that's what the apostles thought. The apostles thought when he said, y'all never going to die, y'all going, you all going to live and y'all going to see me come back. They thought they were never going to die. It was a word that came out. The apostles not going to ever die. Mm. That's not what God said. The Bible says that's not what the word, word of God said. Amen. Mm. And so we have to trust God and know his word. Here's the third thing to overcome doubt and unbelief. We have to fellowship and fellowship often. That's right. The New Testament church, when they started, they came together all the time. Amen. Every day they were coming together. The Bible said when they came together, they, nobody was in need. Nobody was ever in want. When they came together, they knew what they were a family. That's right. mm -hmm. They knew they were a family. They were committed to one another. I believe that's why God has made the local assembly the way he did. Mm -hmm. He made it so we can touch one another. He made it so we can talk to one another. Amen. You can look at one another and you can tell something's wrong. Amen. Right. He made, see, he didn't make it so that, that we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't touch and agree with one another. Yeah. 
That's why he made the local assembly. You know, you have super large churches. I, I'm not have, I don't have anything against super large churches. But even super large churches, they, they, they try to come together. They try to, they, try to, they try to add all these little cells, they call them. Little small churches within a church. Why? Because we need to touch each other. If you're going to grow by faith, if you're going to walk by faith, your faith is going to be increased and you're going to not fall into doubt. You got to be with other believers. You got to hang out with other believers. Amen. If you think that you're going to grow in Christ, hanging out with the same old crowd, that ain't happening. Let me tell you something. That ain't happening. If you think you're going to get saved and be in Christ Jesus and you hanging out with the same crew that you hung out with in darkness, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. You're going to be most miserable. If you're truly saved in Christ, you're going to be most miserable. Amen. You got to pray, Lord, give me some new saved friends. And the old ones that I got, Lord, convert them to Christ. Amen. Convert them. Amen. You have some friends that God will convert. He'll, he'll, he'll convert them. But make sure that you don't stay in darkness. The Bible says that you were once in darkness, but now you are a child of the light. When it comes down to sin, there are some people who will tell you, you know, no, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and do what you do. Grace got you covered. That's another word that's been perverted. Amen. Another word that's been perverted. Amen. God has given us grace. He said, I'll forgive you for your sins. Not only will I forgive you, but I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And as a matter of fact, I will I will I will cut the penalty and allow you to walk in freedom. You don't have to worry about trying to make it in. Amen. I'll give you the freedom. But see, at the same time, the grace, he gives us grace not to continue into our sin. He gives us grace to give us freedom from sin. Amen. That's right. And so what we do is we have to understand. We have to understand that if we're going to walk by faith, That's right. if we're going to grow in Christ, we're going to have to fellowship with the saints amen god knows what he's doing That's you right. can't hang out with the same crew That's right. amen you can't hang out with them amen i tried it it doesn't work no i try to talk i try to talk christian talk to my old friends they were like man what the bleep you talking about because right. they used to it they used they used to me talking the way they talk That's right. man come on man real, for real man for real for real you know, they talking about the girls and what have you. You're trying to say, well, you know. I remember one time, we had one time, one of my friends, they opened up, they said, hey, look what we got here. And they opened up, they had, they had some pornography. They had, they had you know, the, oh, did I say pornography? Well, they had some, they, they, had, they opened up the book. And, you know, we used to that stuff. But now I'm, I'm trying to be Christian, amen. Right. I'm trying to be Christian. And I'm like, they say, oh, he don't look at this stuff. He don't look at this. Oh, my, you don't look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you what happened after that. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't win in that battle. <laughs> I didn't win. I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't win in that one. Thank God he delivered me from all that stuff. Amen. 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 But see, you can't hang out. You trying to hang, you can't do it. You can't do it. God have to give you new friends. Amen. He have to give you new friends unless, unless he convert the old ones. Amen. So we thank God for that. And finally, and finally, you're going to walk by faith and not allow doubt to overcome and overtake you. You're going to have to take up the shield of faith. Amen. You're going to have to take up the, the shield of faith. Now, the Bible says that it has divine powers. That's right. Now, I don't know. I look at some of these old gladiator uh, movies on, or, 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 or features on the History Channel, yeah. and they have the shield and they have the sword, and, and some of them have these big shields. And they're able to use these shields and they, hold, they use the shield to defend themselves, but they also use the shield for the offense. Right. Amen. They're, they're offensive. They come in and they become aggressive. And when you look at God, he says that my weapons have powers. Right. Amen. They have powers that's beyond what we see here. If we would dare to take up the shield of faith yeah. and stop running and hiding, take the shield of faith and lean into your doubt. Amen. Right. Lean into the very thing that caused you to doubt God. Lean into it. Amen. Right. Amen. Whatever God promised you, whatever, whether, whatever you, whether you stand in your post, whether you're doing what God has called you to do, take the shield of faith, hold it up and lean into it. Take the shield of faith. Yeah. Believe him. Get in the word of God. If We do these things. I promise you. I promise each and every one of you. If you do these things. God will increase your faith. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen.